What Bulgaria is like? I knew literally nothing about this country. I always thought that it's pretty modern and has a beautiful architecture influenced by a neighboring Turkey. But once I set my foot on this land, I was like struck by a thunder. What the hell is this mess? Car wrecks rotting on the sides of the roads. Car wrecks driving on the roads. On the road with holes like a goddamn Swiss cheese. Buildings looking like after a war. The whole public infrastructure in a terrible condition. In Bulgaria, if something is made of metal, it's rusted. If made of concrete, it's cracked. If made of wood, it's rotten. And if it's painted, then it's faded and the paint goes off. It's absolutely fascinating how everything in this country is in the process of decomposition. I arrived to the capital, Sofia, and I thought, okay, it's the biggest city in the country. It's probably gonna be beautiful, right? Well, I managed to capture some nice spots, but in general, the city is really unattractive. Typical post-Soviet grave metropoly. And even in the very center, if you have one nice building, usually next one is already a ruin. Also, you can meet a lot of terrifying zombies, aka homeless people. And the people. Either the whole nation has a mass depression, or they just don't give a damn about anything. Nobody smiles, they do not react to neither positive nor negative things. Total indifference. A large percentage of people are pretty bad looking. And they age terribly. What is up with you Bulgarians? I really have an impression that you don't enjoy life and you don't care about yourself. But, as you get deeper in the country, Bulgaria starts to show a different face. There are a lot of mountain ranges and most of the attractions lies in between them. So even though the roads are terrible, driving is a not so bad experience with such surrounding. In a pretty remote area in the northwest corner of Bulgaria, there is a first surprise hiding. Medieval Belogradchik fortress built among the rocks. Speaking of mountains and rocks, you just can't miss the amazing hike to the Seven Rila lakes. One of the most stunning mountain views I've seen in Europe. Oh gosh, this hike was so full of adventures for me. People was looking at me like I was mental. For a casual observer, my day looked like a comedy sitcom that went like this. A dude climbs the mountain with a bike on his back. Then he takes a bath in one of the lakes, which turned out to be strictly forbidden, so he gets bashed by dozens of people around. Then he flies a drone and crashes it in the bushes under the peak. Then he runs down the peak and starts digging in these bushes. He finally finds the drone and announces it with a loud scream. Then he gets on the bike, rides 100 meters and crashes heavily, because he wanted to impress a group of girls by jumping over a rock in front of them. Yep, that was the day. Even though I ended up with a lost dignity, with damaged drone, damaged bike, a broken rib and some heavy bruises and scratches, at the end of the day a big smile was cracking on my face. And as I continued driving through Bulgaria, I actually started to like this little mess. You really feel freedom and wildness. Next big city, Plovdiv. On the outside, it looks pretty cool with this big green nipple in the middle. But on the inside, as usual in Bulgaria, the city is far from attractive. I started to notice yet another absurd. Bulgaria is enormously tall curves. Like, what the hell is this? It's funny to watch small people literally climbing these half meter tall walls. If 
if you want to taste some of the traditional Bulgarian architecture, you gotta visit the city of Lovech. Check it out, this is the way they used to build their roofs. They stacked stones on top of each other and everything holds together thanks to its mass and friction. Oh, food. Um, Bulgaria has not so many specialities. Usually meat and pitas, some soups, um, but if you want to taste something unusual, check out this beverage. It tastes weird as hell, like milk mixed with cigarettes. Seriously. Ooh, this face reveals that the next place is going to be awesome. And it indeed is. This monster is the biggest and absolutely the most spectacular cave on the continent. Damn, I couldn't believe that I'm still in Europe. Oh, and a fun fact related to admission fees. Most of the attractions in the country do have ticket offices, but actually nobody gives a damn about controlling it. You can literally pass by the office and nobody's gonna bother you. Or the office is so far from the entrance that you really need to go extra mile to buy the ticket. Just 20 minutes of driving east and we have yet another amazing, literally tropical attraction. Krishuna waterfalls. And there is stunning Turkish water. Damn, am I in Indonesia? We have a hat-trick of awesome places in near distance, like half hour of driving east and Velika Ternova shows up. I would say it's the only city in Bulgaria that I can describe as genuinely beautiful. Couple of Italian style cozy streets, an amazing monument in the middle, a huge fortress and the picturesque landscapes around. Not visiting it would be a mistake. bit to the south and we got to Shipka Pass. Great mountain views and some cool monuments commemorating war efforts in this area. And since we are in the topic of monuments, well, this is definitely a thing in Bulgaria. The amount of huge war-related monuments is staggering. They are everywhere, they are giant, they are grim. That's typical for post-Soviet lands. But there is one that outshines basically every monument in Europe. The Founders of Bulgarian State. Behold! It's like a monstrous concrete skyscraper with a story of Bulgarian beginnings encrypted on its walls. Absolutely stunning. And obviously you just need to pass by the ticket office to enter it for free. Would you believe that one of the most beautiful castles in Europe is in Bulgaria? And what's more, this place was built from the scratch only two decades ago, which was initiated and financed by only one man. Absolutely amazing architecture with a great attention to details. Looks like straight from a fairy tale. Well, sadly the tickets are pretty expensive compared to the Bulgarian's average. And we finally arrive to the coast. The main reason people come to Bulgaria. It's warm, sunny, with lots of sandy beaches and decent infrastructure. We got a couple of cities to choose from. Um, like Varna, the biggest one, is pretty nice. So if you like to have a lot of places to wander, as well as a decent beach, then go with Varna. Uh, we also got Nesebir, tiny medieval town. It would be really awesome if not the ridiculous amount of cheap looking booths with ice creams and Chinese crab. It basically covered the whole view, which absolutely murders the traditional spirit and atmosphere of this town. Then there is the most famous Golden Sands, and I hated it. 30% higher price, uh, tons of loud and drunk youngsters, Tons of cheap and cheese attractions for lazy families. No atmosphere whatsoever. Oh, okay. 
And there's Sunny Beach, my favorite. It's the most lively and colorful. Heading to the north in the direction of Romania, we arrive to the final destination in Bulgaria, Calacria Peninsula. Pretty picturesque piece of land. And time for a summary. Oh gosh, Bulgaria, you got me surprised. I would never expect so beautiful nature and, on the contrary, so enormous mess in the cities. Come on, Bulgarians, smile and maintain both yourself and your homes a bit more. You have some amazing landscapes, so it's worth to work on improving the rest of the country. Anyway, I'm sure it's not the last time that I'm visiting Bulgaria.